Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG. We recently wrapped up a video showing you how to take a banana plug, a ring terminal, and an alligator clip, and make a ground radial system universal to all your portable antenna operations. Today I'm going to show you real quickly how to create a wire winder for that ground radial. This is a spare chameleon antenna winder that I've had laying around. It accommodates both sets of my new radials, each one having three 16 and a half foot wires, plus right there hiding underneath is my banana plug. But this is a little bit larger than what I want to be carrying. You know me, I'm all about compact quality gear. And of course this is quality, but I do have the opportunity to go with something smaller. If any of you have some great ideas for winders, please leave comments uh, in the description below to where to get these things. This is a kite winder that I got off of Amazon. It came with some uh, string on it, and so I just removed the string and, and didn't use it anymore. This is working well for me, but you might have a better idea. I'd like to hear it. So let me show you how to take this and turn it into this. And comparing it to our chameleon antennas winder, you know, you do see that we have a smaller footprint. And I'm all about good gear, small footprint. So let's see what we can do with this. Here's one I've already completed. I used the existing hole that was already in the winder. I cut a notch in the top right corner to accept the shock cord as I wrap it around. I've added a crimp connector to the end of my shock cord. Yep, it's overkill, but it's never coming off. And then I did the same thing to the other end of the shock cord. It's that simple. Let me show you how. Let's start by cutting our groove in the top right hand corner. Slice one. Slice two. All right, we're going to cut a little deeper there. Not quite as deep as I want it to be. Let's clean this up a little bit. Keep all my fingers intact. Okay. We have our hole for the shock cord. We'll wrap it around here twice, and then we have the slot to accept the other end of the shock cord. We're going to use the existing shock cord on the one I've completed as a guide to cut our second one for our second winder. I'm going to go ahead and put my crimp connector on this end first before we cut it to length. These crimp connectors are for putting wire cables together, but they also work quite well on shock cord. Put some muscle into it. Ugh. Mm. Mm. Done. Wow, that was loud. Completely contained in that fitting. Nice. All right, let's cut it to length. We're going to go a little long, and then I'll trim it. All right, there we are. Cut the length. Let's get our second crimp connector on there. But first, make sure you go through your winder. Almost there. All right, that's a tight fit. Let's get it the exact same length of the other one because I really like the tension that the first one that I did holds at. So it looks like right here is where we want it to be. Yeah? Close enough. Oh, my crimp moved on me. Hang on. 
try it again. There we go. Going nowhere. All right, there's our second one. Let's go ahead and get our wire wrapped around it so I can show you how it works. If you're not using a figure eight, anytime you wind your wires, it works great. You should consider doing so. Okay, let's get it wrapped. What do you think? Looks good. All right, hope you found this useful. Talk to you soon, 73.